Hello, this is David Deger Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. The Holy Spirit within you is your qualification for ministry. When the Holy Spirit took up residence in your being, God gave to you power and authority over demonic beings. I want to teach you how to cast out demons and set the demon possessed free. That's what I'm going to be talking about right now. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're going to get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of love come down as you show your face. We will see your glory here. And I Well, as you can probably tell, this isn't the normal set for Spirit Church. And over the next few weeks, you're going to be seeing different setups as we transition to the new and final location for this season of our ministry. We are almost done with constructing the new television set. But in the meantime, as I said, you're going to be seeing different sets in front of you. Don't get used to any of them. I will tell you when we're on the new set, I promise. So. I'm talking to you about how to cast out demonic powers. Now, you've often heard it said that you have authority over demonic beings. I taught over the past couple of weeks about signs of demonic possession. But now I want to teach you how you can cast them out. And really, there is no how-to when it comes to the very specific application of laying hands on someone who is possessed by a demonic spirit. Really, what I'm talking about here is how to live such a life that gives you authority over demonic beings. You see, there is no ritual that you have to apply to cast out demons. There is no special prayer that you can pray that will cause them to leave someone. If there were a special prayer, if there were a ritual, then the power would be in that ritual. The power would be in that prayer rather than in the power of the Holy Spirit. But you and I both know that the power to drive out demonic forces comes from the Holy Spirit himself living within you. Now, how do you live in such a way that that authority, that power manifests causing the, demonic, the demonically oppressed to go free when you come near them, when you lay hands on them, when you drive out that demonic being? Well, the key really is time in God's presence. And I'm going to talk about that for a moment, but I want to share with you this story to illustrate the power of what I'm talking about. I was ministering in the East Coast, and this was a conference that I was speaking at with 
nothing but just a bunch of youth and young adults. It was a powerful time in God's presence. People had come from all over the East Coast to be in this meeting, and I was ministering. I forget the message even to this day, I believe, on being light in a dark world. But during my message, I began to sense this stirring in the Spirit. The atmosphere began to shift. And toward the end of the service, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this girl begins to scream and growl and cuss and contort. She was shaking under the power of God. I knew immediately that it was a demonic power inside of her. So she begins to manifest and the ushers come forward and they say, we have to remove her from the service. She's a distraction. As they're dragging her out of the service, the Holy Spirit quickened me. He said, call that girl forward. I want to make a demonstration of my power. So I said, call her forward. Bring her up here to the front. And the ushers start pulling her to the front of the building. And the whole time she's fighting them. She's kicking her. She's trying to stop the movement with her feet. She didn't want to get anywhere near me. And so finally, she's standing just a few feet in front of me. She's looking at me. She's cussing at me. She's cursing me. Her body is just shaking. She's, her face is contorting. Just as I go to lay hands on her, someone else in the crowd begins to manifest. Someone else who was possessed by a demonic being. So I said, bring that person up too. And as they're dragging that person up, another person begins to manifest. And then another person begins to manifest. And another person begins to manifest. Until there are about a dozen demon-possessed people standing in a line, all of them screaming, many of them cussing, all of them contorting their faces, looking at me with rage and hatred in their eyes. I've cast out demons out of, uh, from many people, and many of them have told me that while I was praying for them, they felt this hatred in their hearts toward me, and they wanted to kill me. So knowing that, I'm looking at this crowd of people, I can see that there is this demonic hatred on their faces, and I can feel that demonic influence on their bodies. And so I just say, prayed a simple prayer. The Lord told me just pray a simple prayer. It's how I was led in the moment. I said, in the name of Jesus, and the moment I spoke the name of Jesus, in fact, before I could even finish pronouncing the name of Jesus, I said the first syllable. I said, in the name of G, and as soon as I got that first syllable out, all of those who were up at the front for deliverance fell out under the power of God, and they began to twist on the ground like snakes, and they all screamed. I said, in the name of Jesus. And I prayed a simple prayer of deliverance. It was something like, I command you to let them go. And all of them, at the same time, every single one of them were delivered. They all stood up. And instead of screaming, instead of yelling, instead of their faces contorting, instead of them slithering on the ground like snakes, they stood, many of them with tears streaming down their faces. And they lifted their hands. And they began to worship God. They were set free in an instant. My friend, that's how Jesus did it. It doesn't take a long ritualistic prayer to cast a demon out. You don't have to go back seven generations this way, seven generations that way. You don't have to interview the demon. How did you get in? What was your door that was open? How did you come to have influence over this person? What is your name? You simply have to speak with power and authority, come out in the name of Jesus, and that demonic being has to go. That's how Jesus did it. That's how we are to command the forces of darkness. No, there is no process to it. I know you've heard otherwise, but we have to look to the Word. There was only one instance that I, I've seen where Jesus asked the demon's name, and that was the man with the, the legion of demons in him. But then he cast them out in an instant too. There was no process. There was no fighting. There was no generational curse to break. Many people ask me, do you believe in generational curses? You see, the moment you get saved, every curse is broken, even if it's generational. When I'm bought by the blood of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit, there is no curse that can take hold of my life. And so, this is the type of influence and power God wants to give to us. Acts chapter 4 verse 13 says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the Scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Peter and John had no special training in Scriptures. They had never gone to seminary. They had never 
received anything that we would deem as an education when it came to the Bible. But they had one thing better, and that was the fact that they had been with Jesus. Now, I'm not against Bible school. My point is simple. There is power when you spend time in the presence of God. The more time that you spend in the presence of the Holy Spirit, the greater the manifestation of power will come through your life. The greater the amount of time in the presence, the greater the intensity of the power upon you. The key to the power of the Holy Spirit is walking in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts chapter 19, verses 13 through 16 say, A group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, leading priests, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. Not only were these men embarrassed, but they were overpowered by this demonic being. The demonic being made a show of them. Why? Because they didn't know Jesus for themselves. There was no personal relationship. They did not spend time in the presence of Jesus. In Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 12, we see a powerful story about the transfiguration of Jesus. Now, I'll read a little bit of the, the portion of Scripture to you. The Scripture says, Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed, and His clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. And then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. So here we see that Peter, James, and John go to the mountaintop with Jesus. Now, Jesus was glowing with the glory. When they come down from the mountain, skip ahead now to verse 14. When they come down to the mountain, this is what happens. Verse 14 says, When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them, and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. Now, why was the crowd overwhelmed with awe? I believe it's because Jesus was still glowing from the glory of the transfiguration experience. He came off of the mountaintop from a heavenly experience, from an open heaven, and He comes down from the mountain to find that His disciples are with the Pharisees arguing, and He comes in, He's still glowing from the, glowing from the glory of God. The crowd looks at Him, and they stand in awe. They can see the very glory of God on Him. Now, one of the men in the crowd spoke up. Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Now, here's the interesting thing. This wasn't all the disciples that were there that were trying to cast out demons. Remember, Peter, James, and John were there at the mountaintop with Jesus. Why is it that Jesus was able to cast out this spirit, as you'll le read later in that context? You can read down to verse 18. Why is it that Jesus was able to drive out this evil spirit? Why is it that, that the other disciples were not? Why is it that these men who had been with Jesus were unable to drive out that demonic power? It's because they had been with Him, but they had not been with Him to the mountaintop. They had been in His presence. Sure, they were able to cast out other demons. Jesus says later, this kind comes out only through prayer and fasting. That tells us that there are different kinds of demonic spirits and different levels of wickedness, different levels of power in the demonic realm. So the disciples that had not visited the mountaintop were the ones who struggled to cast out demons. My friend, if you've ever struggled with casting out a demonic being, if it's ever taken you a really long time to do it, if you had to stay there for three, four hours driving this thing out, my suggestion to you is that you spend more time on the mountaintop. Because the scripture tells us that with a simple command, Jesus would drive out demonic beings. You say, oh, but that's Jesus. However, that's the same power that dwells in you, my friend. You have the same exact power that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in you. So how do you cast out demonic beings? It's simple. Spend 
time with Jesus. When you're spending hours with Jesus, it will simply take you seconds to cast out demons. And if it takes you seconds to cast out demons, it's because there's power on your life. If, however, it takes you hours to cast out devils, perhaps you should increase your time with Jesus. That power, that authority comes from being in His presence. And that is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God would invite you to the mountaintop. That God would take you to the deeper places in His presence that would cause you to walk in heavenly authority. Come on, let's pray and let's believe that God would use your life in this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I ask, Lord, that you would give them a greater hunger for your presence. That you would invite them to the mountaintop to spend time in your glory. That they walk in the glory of God. That they walk in your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. The truth is, my friend, that you'll hear many things about spiritual warfare and demons that aren't true. You've heard it said, new levels, new devils. But my friend, there's no devil who can walk on your level when you walk in the presence of God. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because... I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Sign up today. It's absolutely free. You'll get a brand new teaching every week, a brand new worship video every week, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Now to your comments, and these comments are from Signs of Demonic Possession, Part 2 of 2. Real quick, real quick break here. If you would like me to possibly read your comment next week, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below right now here on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, get over to YouTube, leave your comment there, and I'll be sure to uh, go over those comments that my staff provides, and the ones that I want to read will be read next week. Don't forget also to subscribe to our channel, and when you do subscribe, click the notification bell so that you receive all of our content and you know what? Our channel is growing faster than ever before. I think we just topped off over 110,000 subscribers. Share the content with your friends and family. Help us spread the news. So here are the comments from last week, Signs of Demonic Possession 2 of 2. And I really recommend you go back and watch those two teachings. It's a two-part, one teaching really, but broken down into two messages, Signs of Demonic Possession. It will help you identify and discern demonic possession in people. Tara Oma writes, excellent teaching again. I'm not surprised. Just pleased and grateful to Jesus. Kyle writes, such an anointed worship song. Amen. Christ alone. He is Lord of all. Thank you, Brother David and Stephen. This is indeed the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. He's talking, of course, there about Stephen Moctezuma, who does anointed worship, my favorite worship leader of all time. Go and be sure to check out his playlist here on the Encounter TV Network. I know you'll enjoy that music. Narmada writes, thanks a lot again. Praise God for the provision of godly men like you, Pastor David. Pray that God continually uses you for His glory. Praying for you and looking forward to the next one. And the final commenter writes, Hi, thank you for your encouragement. I just want to say that the first time I felt the presence of God was watching your services here and following your prayers. Congrats and may God bless you. May your ministry overflow by the love of Jesus. And really, we get messages like that all the time from people who experience the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit just by watching the content. And we want to spread that message further than ever before. Look, we make the content free, our events are free, and we want to keep offering these things. So this is where I need your help and support. If you would like to support this great and anointed work, help us win souls and build believers through events and media, then I would like you to pray about becoming today a monthly partner of our ministry at $30 or more a month. When you sign up to become a partner at $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. I will sign that and send it to you as my initiation gift just to say thank you. And when you sign up, you're helping us to win souls, and I know God will bless you for it. Look, don't delay. Consider a one-time gift or a monthly gift today. Don't say, oh, next week I'll sign up, or next week I'll give a gift. Look, every gift counts. 
whether you're one of those who gives the $100,000 gift or you're one of those who gives the $5 gift. We have people who give both and everything in between. Wherever you fall in that spectrum, give something today. Give a one-time gift today to help expand this ministry, to grow this ministry, that we can continue to do what God has called us to do on this scale. Do a one-time gift or a monthly gift today. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Do that right now. Don't delay. Help us get this word out, and I know God will bless you for it. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.